What's happening everybody? Today I'm actually out here. I'm cleaning my boat and kind of organizing some tackle and I've kind of got everything spread out on the front of my boat but I wanted to talk to y'all today about the perfect flounder rig setup everything. We have a few tutorials on flounder fishing and on flounder fishing rigs but today I want to go into a little bit more detail and actually just talking about the perfect flounder rig and we're going to talk about the perfect flounder rig kind of like each different scenarios. Shallow water and then sort of your like inshore deeper water like fishing a bridge or some deeper docks or things like that and then we're going to talk about some near shore wreck fishing rigs and talk about the perfect flounder rig for each of those setups. But before I do that I have to do a little bit of a shameless plug but not really because check it out y'all we have some one fish two fish swag some apparel and check it out we even got hats and everything you guys so christy and i we do this youtube channel one fish two fish our biggest thing is just kind of helping you guys out getting y'all stoked motivated to get out there and catch some fish so if y'all want to support this channel then y'all gotta get yourself some of this uh apparel because we actually went uh, a little bit higher quality on the apparel very much so appreciate that because we put a lot of time a lot of energy into making these videos so that is one thing i got to say before we start this video is you guys check out some of this merch and if you guys want to get some then hit us up or we'll have a link in the description below somewhere on this video or whatever so anyways you guys let's get right to it we're gonna talk about the perfect flounder fishing rig in each of these scenarios so let's talk about when you're fishing shallow um, what is my favorite flounder fishing rig set up everything in my opinion what is the perfect flounder fishing rig all right so this right here this is in my opinion this is the perfect flounder fishing setup for that shallow water and we're going to talk about everything let's start with the rod itself this is a favorite fishing uh jackhammer this is the this is the seven foot uh rating is from a one eighth ounce to a five eighth ounce um action is moderate fast so the reason why i like this and i typically by the way i'm using a quarter ounce jig head on this one um and the reason why i really like this for flounder fishing is this rod is super super sensitive in the tip this tip right here people is like one of the most sensitive tips that i've ever used on any rod in my opinion this is the perfect rod and reel for that shallow water inshore flounder fishing. Um, the reel that I have is a Florida Fishing Products 2500 um, and then I have 10 pound braid on that and then my leader line is going to be anywhere from 10 to 15 pound fluorocarbon and for my leader line I like to go a little bit longer so that's going to be about a three foot leader line or about two and a half feet but at least about two and a half feet length for a leader line is what i like to use and then uh like i said so it's going to be a quarter ounce jig head for that but y'all this is what you're going to see me fishing with in that shallow water flounder fishing scenario whether i'm wade fishing or just again fishing shallow in and around some of them shallow docks flats things like that and then when it comes down to the lure or the soft plastic that i'd like to throw on this all right so anything from a z-man this is the easy shrimp uh, and i'll bounce this shrimp along um, on the quarter ounce jig head i'll also use berkeley gulp swimming mullet um, that's great for these so really kind of like anything from a shrimp to a swim bait is going to be what I'm gonna be using for this. And uh, so that quarter ounce jig head, this is one of my favorite colors, is the root beer with the chartreuse tail. And you can just bounce this on the bottom. And there we go. So that right there, that is my favorite flounder fishing setup. Now let's move to um, fishing some of the kind of like maybe you're fishing a bridge uh, you're fishing a little bit deeper um, waters or kind of bigger open water then you know what i'm gonna upgrade this is my favorite phantom uh, this is a little bit more of a beefy rod as you can see this jackhammer i like this is my little samurai sword right here it's just a little bit 
uh, you know, kind of lighter action, you know, again, super sensitive in the tip and for flounder fishing, you definitely want that because a flounder bite sometimes, you know, again, it's not going to be like a red fish where they just destroy it all the time. Sometimes that flounder bite is going to be that subtle little tick tick. So that's why you want that sensitivity in the tip. So when I'm fishing a little bit deeper, I'm going to go a little bit beefier because I'm going to be using some heavier rigs. This is my favorite Phantom. This is a seven foot and it's rated for a quarter ounce to three eighth ounce lures and its action is fast. Uh, so this again, this is my favorite Phantom. This is the rod. Again, it's a little bit beefier. The reel is a uh, Flora Fishing Products. This is a 3000 series reel. Uh, gonna up the braid to 15 to 20 pound test. I believe this is 15 pound test braid. And right now we're gonna be using a bucktail and we're gonna be, for the teaser, is gonna be a three aught hook. This is gonna be a tandem rig and this is really easy. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the loop for our teaser. So we're gonna do, take your line, make it into a loop just like that. Take your line, make it into a loop. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the line on both ends and you've got two parts of your line just like this. So two parts, see that? So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take these and you're gonna twist them five times. Two, three, four, five. Okay, take this part of the loop, put it through where we just twisted, push it through just like that. Hold it with your mouth and then pull these together. Give it a little extra sauce there, a little extra spit shine. And there you go. So that right there, that is going to be our teaser. So I like to tie the teaser first. So that way I can, you know, kind of determine how long I want. Usually it's going to be about, probably about eight inches to a foot is, you know, where I'm going to tie my bucktail. And now we're going to tie the bucktail to the end of the line. Again, it's about eight to 12 inches right below. This is gonna be a clinch knot. You guys can tie whatever. Usually I'll use like either a clinch knot or I'll use a polymer knot to tie my bucktail. Pull that nice and tight. Okay, so there it is. So this right here, we got our bucktail. Let's see if I can move this camera to show y'all better. Okay, so we got our bucktail down here. That's gonna bounce on the bottom. And then we've got our teaser right above that. So that's about, you know, like I said, about eight inches to a foot above that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our three aught hook right here. Let that focus. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Camera. Almost any hook will work to tie this on. Some people use a kale hook, that's fine. Some people use a J hook, that's fine as well. So we got our loop that we made, kind of like our dropper loop right above the bucktail. Put it right through the eye of your hook. And then just Pull it around your hook just like that, just like a simple slip knot. Pull it nice and tight. Check that out. That's all you need right here, people. That's all you need. And then, so if we're gonna talk about the perfect flounder rig, on the top, so on the top hook is gonna be Berkeley Gold, a swimming mullet. If you're getting a lot of those tail biters that are, you know, kind of destroying your Berkeley Gold, then, uh, you can always switch the teaser to a Z-Man. But this is, my opinion, this is the perfect, you guys came here to see the perfect flounder rig. All right, so on the bucktail, I like to put a Z-Man Minnow Z. The Z-Man, or the bucktail, is gonna be the one that's typically gonna get bit the most. You will get fish on the teaser, that's why I always like to fish a teaser whenever I can, especially when I'm flounder fishing. Um, but I like to use a Z-Man on the bucktail because this is what's going to get the most action, is this bucktail. So, this right here, people, this is the perfect flounder fishing rig right here. Oh yeah, so, and then I'll also put, I'll also put some uh, pro cure on that as well, just right up on the bucktail. Now, let's move on to the third scenario and that's gonna be 
fishing a little bit deeper. Some of your nearshore wrecks and everything. And let's take off this little tall rig that I have tied on right now. And what I've got, start with the rod and the reel. So this rod right here, this is definitely more of a stout rod. Um, this is a Florida Fishing uh, Products reel. This is the Osprey 4000. And then I've got actually 30 pound braid. The 30 pound is really like for everything. You can catch bull drum, you can catch cobia, but when you're fishing those near shore wrecks, this right here is the samurai sword. This is my samurai sword. So like a seven foot, 4000 series reel, about 25 to 30 pound braid, because typically you're gonna be vertical, uh, jig fishing over wrecks, things like that. And then for the leader line, I'm gonna be using about 25 to 30 pound test for my leader line. So I have actually have, this is the Florida Fishing Products leader line. Uh, this stuff is awesome. This is the coral pink color. So it's super, super clear. 25 pound test, this right here is what I like to use. And when it comes to what jig, what rig I like to use, I like to use like a two ounce bucktail um, that I can tip with cobia belly. Y'all came on this video for me to talk about the perfect flounder fishing rig for each scenario. If you have cobia belly and, or even bluefish belly for that matter, and you're fishing over top of a wreck, you're fishing anywhere that's, you know, you feel confident it's gonna hold flounder, that right there, that is what's gonna get it done, is the belly, even like croaker belly. But bluefish belly, cobia belly is probably the number one best thing that you can like tip your bucktail with is gonna be cobia belly. Because when you're fishing those near shore wrecks, um, you know, again, it's, uh, there's gonna be a lot of tail biters out there. There's, typically there's gonna be a ton of sea bass. Um, and you might even catch like some sharks. You might catch just, you know, there's a lot more creatures out there. This right here, this is about the lightest bucktail that I'm gonna use when it comes to flounder fishing over those near shore wrecks. So this right here, this is a one ounce bucktail. And then I'm gonna tip this. If I don't have cobia belly or don't have anything like that, then I'm just gonna use some diesel minnow Z. A lot of these flounder on those deeper uh, structures, they are going to be bigger flounder. So you want bigger baits. The most important thing when it comes to flounder fishing on those deep wrecks is you wanna be straight up and down vertical or as vertical as possible. So that's why when it comes to my gear, my line, um, and even my lure or my bait, I'm gonna be using the lightest gear that I can use, but it's gotta be heavy enough for it to be fished appropriately. So I'm not gonna be fishing this jackhammer and this little dinky quarter ounce jig head, you know, in 50 foot of water out on a near shore wreck or offshore wreck. No, I'm gonna be using something that's gonna get the job done. It's gotta be stout. But at the same time, you know, even like the conventional rod and reels, those work great. Um, for me, this is my perfect flounder fishing rig for fishing those near shore wrecks. And this bucktail, you guys, right here, gets it done with the Z-Man. So the Z-Man is much more durable and can withstand a lot of those tail biters. Because again, when you're fishing those near shore wrecks, you're gonna have tons of sea bass. And that's really gonna be what's gonna kind of like be frustrating sometimes is you're gonna pull up to a wreck, get anchored on it, and all you're gonna be is you're just feeling those sea bass. It's like, brrr, it feels like a little machine gun. And, you know, and that flounder bite's just gonna be that, that tap, just like that. So you guys, that's why I want the perfect combination of a rod, a reel, my line, and my bait that's gonna be something that's going to allow me to fish it appropriately to present that bait, present that lure best in front of the flounder. So it's gotta be heavy enough. So sometimes they're using two, three, four ounce plus uh, even like a jig head or a bucktail that we're tipping with either a Z-Man, um, Minnow Z, sometimes the Berkeley Gulp, but Berkeley Gulp, you guys, out in the open ocean on those near shore wrecks, you know, it's kind of tough because you're gonna have a ton of tail biters. So you're gonna go through a lot of Berkeley Gulp. That's why Z-Man works great. And I do use Pro Cure out on those near shore wrecks for sure. So anyways, you guys, 
that right there, hopefully this video helps y'all out, but those are the perfect flounder fishing rigs for each of the scenarios in my opinion. And um, you know, this is more of artificial lures, artificial baits, and we'll probably do another one talking about live baits, things like that. But hopefully this video helps y'all out and hopefully y'all help support this channel and get yourself some of this nice looking merch. So, all right, people, peace out.